Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So we'll be reacting to Officer Tantum and this one said a 95 year old veteran kicked out of home and replaced by illegals. Like illegals. But me, to be frank, I think this illegal matter of the thing is maybe your government is not being transparent with you with you guys, with the citizens, because most of because we especially we in Nigeria we go legal. When I mean we go legal, nobody won't go die. Person not go die. Who won't, who won't lose in life? Hmm. Oh, there was there was something that was training them during is it is it Liberia? Like if you want to go to Europe, you can follow Liberia. Oh no, who who they follow Liberia again? Because you know it's it will take months, it will take weeks, but guys, hmm. Are you going to be sure that you even reach Liberia? Are you? Because the kind of things that are happening, so people are scared. Nobody wants to go illegal. Everybody wants to go legal. Especially in my country, my countrymen. They always wanted to go legal because the kind of papers, the kind of money, the kind of bills they pay because they want to travel. So me, because none of them will not just stand up. Some of them is um, true arts. You see papers, uh, especially for school, you see government like the US are offering a uh, amount of students for, 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 for scholarship, for this one, for that one. And sometimes most of the government fund this. Yes, they fund it. So, sure. Let's check this one and see how this veteran was kicked out of his home. It was very disgraceful what they did to the people in the island shores. They gave us time to get out, but they never said when, and they never said they were going to get us out. And then one day, there's a thing on the board, a notice on the board, you got to be out by March 15th. I think that gave us like a month and a half to yeah. find out where we're going to go. Let's get into this. The migrant issue in our country is absolutely out of control. You know, one thing that I, that I see that's happening, and I think we shouldn't be delusional about, is that they are literally trying to create a new population of people that can vote for them. Biden can see very clearly that he's losing the battle of ideas, he's losing the battle of economic success, and most people are disgruntled about his leadership as the dead president of the United States of America. And he needs to replace them with new bodies. The black vote is going to dwindle um, from the from the Democrat Party. It, that's just the way it is. They're going to either dwindle through becoming uh, disgruntled enough not to vote, or they're going to vote Republican. We just saw that the mayor of the, the, the great city of Dallas, Texas, decided to switch his party affiliation from Democrat to Republican. We saw, um, uh, what's her name in Arizona? I forget her name. She's dressing like a hoochie mama when she go in Congress. I forget her name. It'll come to me here in a second. But she switched her party affiliation from Democrat to Independent. Kristen Cinema. Kristen Cinema. So, you know, when you look at those things that are occurring, you see that the Democrat parties are losing a lot of a lot of traction forcing mandates on uh, vaccinations. I mean, all of these things that the people are waking up to their behaviors, um, it's causing them to lose traction. But what do they want to do in exchange? They want to get as many illegal aliens into this country and they give them aid, give them housing, even, even destroying cities. It was very disgraceful what they did to the people in the island shores. They gave us time to get out, but they never said when, and they never said they were going to get us out. And then one day, there's a thing on the board, a notice on the board, you got to be out by March 15th. I think that gave us like a month and a half to find yeah. out where we're going to go. I thought my suitcases were going to be on the curb because I'm not that fast. If it wasn't for my daughter, they would have been on the curb. <laughs> but that's what it happened. And uh, that was it. 
I said, no, 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 you're not moving me. And they said, yes, 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 we are. And it, uh, everything was done behind closed doors. Yeah. We didn't have a chance to actually make any attempt to stop them because there wasn't enough time. Nobody should, should be subject, subject to this. Scott Herkert lives right next to the former St. John Villa Academy turned emergency migrant shelter. The city built showers for the shelter right against his backyard. He has been at the center of the neighborhood pushback against placing migrants here across from a school, which may now become a bigger battle. I knew from the beginning this wasn't a checkers game, it was a chess game. In his ruling ordering migrants out of St. John Villa, Staten Island Judge Wayne Ozzie wrote that the guarantee of a bed to anyone who comes to a city shelter was never meant to be applied to migrants. It was only, quote, to provide housing for unfortunate New Yorkers who needed shelter. That right to shelter decree did not envision homeless from China and Korea and Venezuela. It meant the homeless within the city of New York. It was never meant to accommodate uh, a group that could fill two Yankee stadiums or one fifth the population of Staten Island and will, as we said last year, be unsustainable, which is what it is. The judge also questioned whether or not Mayor Eric Adams truly has the emergency powers to be housing and feeding 10,000 migrants coming each month. He says the mayor invited the emergency by offering services. The mayor and governor have openly questioned in recent months if indeed the right to shelter should apply to newly arrived migrants. But City Hall says it will appeal this ruling out of concern it might land families and children sleeping on the street. Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis cheered the judge's ruling, saying this should be a turning point in the migrant crisis. This is a true test right now to see where the mayor truly stands. Is he going to stand with the hardworking, taxpaying citizens of New York? Or is he going to stand with the citizens of other countries, 120 different countries, that have come to New York City demanding free housing? It's hard to say at this hour how quickly the city will be able to appeal or if they'll actually have to vacate the shelter for any period of time before that appeal is held. Uh, for instance, when there was a temporary protective order issued by this judge saying this shelter couldn't be used, the judge got in front of a higher judge and got that overturned very quickly within a couple of hours. So we'll see in the next few hours or days here how this plays out. They can get 15 million people in this country or, you know, in the, at the rate they're going, if they can get, I mean, you got to think since Biden's been in office, it's probably been about eight. 10 million people hey, let me not say that it's been 2 million this year so far so I would I would argue that we have probably had about 5 million people coming to this country illegally and if you got 5 million people and all of them will vote for you all around the country or even in these swing states right you go into Chicago Illinois you go into New York you get these people sprinkled around Texas and all these other places give them mass amnesty now you have a voting block now you have a voting block for the next generation the same thing as Lyndon uh, B. Johnson said that he'll have these Negroes voting for him for 200 years, a voting Democrat for 200 years, that 200 years is, is starting to be up. And they're starting to lose, lose traction of the black vote. And they want to get the Hispanics or the illegals voting for them for 200 years. What do they do? Give you a handout. Hook you on the government system. They don't care nothing about your autonomy. They don't care nothing about your sovereignty. As a citizen, they care more about linking you in to the big government system Therefore, you will be dependent upon them forever. And that is their objective. That's why the immigration is the way it is. Nobody with common sense think it makes sense for people to just barge in our country. Listen, we can't save, we're not making a dent in the world hunger population, you know, or in the population of people who need a better opportunity. We're not making a dent. There's billions of starving people in this, in this world. We're not even making a dent. So why would we ruin our country just to not even make a dent? The real solution is to help people where, they're, where they are at. You don't want to help people come to America. You want to help them where they're at so they don't come to America. That's what we really should be doing, if we do anything at all. To be honest, I think it's good to be philanthropic and it's good to be engaged with, with helping people all over the world, but you have to prioritize yourself first we have to prioritize America first I don't know how many times I have to say this you shouldn't even be able to be the president of the United States of America if you don't sign a, a, a piece of paper a contract saying or raise your right hand and say I will put America first in everything we do we put America first 
That means that if the guys to me, I feel this is bad because for everything that this man sacrificed for for the country to be kicked out of his home for people who have broken the laws is way beyond disgraceful. It's way beyond uncalled for. It's way beyond disrespectful. Seriously, this and he's old. If he's a younger person, he's understandable. But this man is old. He's old world is burning down and everybody's dying all over the world that ain't got nothing to do with us unless we have our stuff together first and it's very simple america is like your house the southern border is like your front door you don't just let people come in your house and then to be honest you can't effectively help other people if you can't help the people that's already in your house how stupid of a man are you that you would have your family struggle just to bring outside people in your house and feed them. That makes no sense. Because once you get to the point where you can't sustain your own family, you definitely can't help nobody else. The point is to become stable, and then, then you can start helping other people become stable. An instable, an unstable person can't, can't help people become stable. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You have to be self-focused or central-focused on what is best for America? If you are, are struggling in your country and you, you eating out the trash can and you pooping all over the streets, don't come to America first. Once we good and we feel like we sufficient, we'll maybe let a few of y'all in and, 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 and work from there. And then we may let a few of y'all in next month. But we ain't finna let you just... I, I don't understand. We just, I'm just watching these people just bombard through our border. And you know, if, if you wanted to call it racist, is it racist? I think it is. People from Africa don't have an opportunity to come here like the people from South America do. So y'all prioritizing Mexican and South American people over black Africans. Who do y'all really care about? There's migrants from other countries that are, that are uh, European countries. They, can't, they don't have an opportunity to come here. Y'all are really selective on letting migrants come in here from South America. And I tell you what, man, if you don't assimilate to America, get your, get your out of here. If you don't come into America and assimilate, get your narrow behind out of our country. I wish we can do that for people that live here, that are citizens. You don't want to be a part of this American experiment. Man, get up out of here. We don't want you here. We don't need you here. You're messing up the whole team. You're messing up the camaraderie. Get your narrow butt out of here if you're not going to do what's right. Let me look at a couple of these clips that I have. I, I want to I wanna play a clip uh, for Donald Trump complaining about migrants with cell phones. I mean, Donald Trump get it. And that's why that's why his, his numbers are higher than Joe Biden's, because he get it. Roll clip one with Trump. Biden puts China first, Mexico first, Ukraine first, Europe first, Asia first, illegal aliens first, above our great veterans, you know that. Puts the illegal aliens above our veterans. Our veterans live like hell. And uh, you know what? You see what's happening. You ever see the illegal aliens? Are one of the weirdest thing. They come in by the tens of thousands, sometimes a day, and they all have, they have cell phones. I'm saying, where did they get the cell phones? Everybody has a cell phone. They're all talking in these beautiful cell phones, and they're expensive ones too. They're nice ones. Somebody who's into that said, "Those are good phones." And then I say, "Who pay, who pays their bills? Who's paying the bills, Margie? Do you want to check that?" I'll give it to Marjorie. She'll figure that one out fast. No, but you ever notice they're all coming in with cell phones. Our veterans don't have cell phones, do they? But they put illegal aliens first and everyone first, but he puts America last. He puts our military last. He puts our veterans last. He puts workers last. He puts small businesses last. He puts everything that's good and proper last. He puts it last. It's crazy. I put America first every single time. Every single time. I ended NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and replaced it with the USMCA, that's Mexico and Canada. The best trade deal ever made in this nation, although I must tell you, my deal with China was very good too, but I don't talk about it because of COVID. I, that was a step too far. Is he right or is he wrong? Come on. Let's keep it 100. Guys, I wonder why they, they treat criminals or criminalist behavior better than law-abiding citizens. 
Why is that so? To think when this man was probably in his late teens, early twenties, he was in a foreign land, scared, tired, hungry, homesick, and missing his families. But now for seven over six and for actually responding to his country call, he is dropped on from a great height, like a great veteran, a great height he was, for a person that has just run away from his country to another country, Res like from his own responsibilities and his own country. Ah, shame on, on those in power, shame on them. Just, and the, and the, and they drove him away from his home. For, for a younger generation, a, a purified generation. See, eh? what I would say is that charity begins at home. You guys need to take care of your own before you extend a hand. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know how you felt when listening to this old man's story or when you felt or when you heard that this old veteran was kicked out of his home because of elegance. In the comment section, like, watch, and subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.